When the snow hits in Chicago, you better have damn fine food and drink to even get me out of my house. So when I heard you guys were sending me to Logan Square in Middle Brown Bungalow for pizza and beer, I couldn't put on my little boy scarf fast enough. Middlebrow, I would say, is a reflection of how the beer scene has changed. Yeah, you know, in the early days, it was kind of just one type of person fit into craft beer, and, and it's definitely blown up since then. What I love is that I can't find it anywhere else. Every beer is unique. There's good breakfast stuff, too, so it's not just like an at-night sort of place to hang out. It's a really good spot to do work and hang out. I, too, work best when I'm surrounded by alcohol. Pizza and beer, right? We have tons of regulars who say they like to be here because it feels like they're at home and it feels like we're all friends. I love when people say like they feel like they're at home because if I had a pizza making machine and a tank to brew beer in, I too would be in the happiest home I've ever been <laughs> in as well. Is there a better combination than pizza and beer? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Pizza and wine? Pizza and wine. See, I'm not down with that. <laughs> You guys are known for your exceptional, outstanding pizza, as well as your awesome, amazing, outstanding beer. The most special part of our pizza is the crust, and that's what people seem most drawn to. And you know, we make sourdough bread here, and the crust has a sourdough component to it. We're featuring the mushroom pizza. Have you had that mushroom pizza? I have had it. I am a mushroom enthusiast. I don't really love mushrooms, and it's one of my favorite pizzas. Normally, I hate mushroom. Really? But. And I just loved it. I don't know what it is. It's very light. If you're from Chicago and you're not a pizza enthusiast, are you really from here? No. Who is the head baker here? Who's the person behind the yeast? Yeah, her name's Jess Galley. So, Jess. Yes, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the tone of voice that everyone watching at home takes with me as well. Why are you the way that you are? Should we make some dough? Let's. What we have here is water, coolish, and sourdough. And that's the chemical reaction stuff that we need to make bread. It's also what gives sourdough bread and our pizza crusts here its unique flavor. Right. Bacteria are really hungry, and they want uh, flour to feast on. They fart a bunch of gas. They what, sorry? They fart a bunch of gas. And I'm just so creates... proud <laughs> that someone other than me made, made a fart reference on this show. So now that we have our pre-ferments and our water in the bowl, we can pour our flowers and our salt. If you want to turn that on. And basically, we just mix it until it's strong enough. And then at this point, we let it rest. And then we throw it in the fridge and just let it sit in the fridge overnight. And we have some bases that are yes. pre-done overnight? We do. So we got mushroom cream base. That is roasted cremini mushrooms. We blend that up and add in heavy cream. We'll grab a little bit of the dry mozzarella and sprinkle it all around. And then right here is the shredded fontina. And then uh, you'll dip into the caramelized onions right here and just bring out a small handful of that. Grab some of the pulled oyster mushrooms and sprinkle that on top. Perfect, it's ready for the oven. Anywhere in particular? It's right there. Yeah. And about here. I'm also a rebel, and so I'm gonna go slightly the other way. Okay. And slightly further back. All right. I'm gonna go and meet my, my friend and we're gonna have some pizza and beer. Sounds great. Okay, say fart one more time. Fart. I can't help myself. All right. The crust it sits on, that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, the mushroom cream sauce is pretty transcendent, in my opinion. Historically, I haven't been attracted to mushrooms, but this pizza, I can't get enough of. It's a celebration of the mushroom, as well as a celebration of everything great about pizza. And your beer is exquisite, too. Everyone has 3,000 IPAs, and you guys only just recently started doing IPAs. That's right, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it we, doesn't get any cooler than that. We just made what we couldn't find as much of, which is, you know, Belgian styles, and that evolved into these wild styles where we were making beer with yeast that really can't be bought or purchased anywhere in the world. It, we, it was in our garden and now it's in our beer and that's that's really it. You know, it makes us a little a little unique in the neighborhood. I like that. And even the bungalow has such a fresh, snappy taste to it. I mentioned to my friends here at home that I don't normally leave the house this time of year unless I have good beer and I have good beer. You did both. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the only problem is, if I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs>